This is a capacitor. The capacitor stores the electric charge. The capacitor works a little bit like a battery. But instead of storing the charge like a battery, it stores the charge a little differently. But like batteries, it cannot hold power for long time. All of the complex electronic devices in use today, capacitor used in almost every circuit board. Let's say it is a simple circuit where an LED bulb is connected to the battery. When you switch on the circuit, the LED will light up. And when you turn it off, the LED will go out. Now, if we keep turning the circuit on and off to first, then the LED will light up and light off. But if we connect a capacitor in parallel with the LED or with the battery, then the LED will be on even if we switch it on and off. Now the question is why capacitor works like this? When the switch is on, the capacitor starts to charge and when it is switched off, the capacitor starts to discharge. So the LED stays on continuously. The simplest and most widely used capacitor is the parallel plate capacitor. It consists of two large plane parallel conducting plates separated by a small distance by a dielectric insulating material, such as ceramic. Dielectric means the material will polarize when in contact with an electric field. Mostly parallel two conducting plates are made by aluminium. The pictorial symbol for a capacitor with fixed capacitance is like this. If we connect the positive of the battery to the positive of the capacitor and the negative of the battery to the negative of the capacitor, then the capacitor starts to charge. Electrons from the negative terminal of the battery continue to accumulate in the negative plate of the capacitor and the electrons in the other plate of the capacitor will continue to move towards the positive of the battery. Since the capacitor has dielectric medium, the electrons cannot pass from the negative plate to the positive plate. After a while, the voltage between the capacitor and the battery will equalize and the flow of electrons in the circuit will stop. Now, if we add an LED to the circuit, the LED will be on. If we remove the battery from the circuit, the LED will still be on. This is because the electrons in the negative plate flow into the circuit and accumulate in the positive plate. So the current flows in the circuit and LED stays on. The flow of electrons occurs until the electrons of the positive and negative plates of the capacitor become the same. We know that opposite charges attract each other and same charges repel each other. The electrons in the capacitor attract the whole but because of the dielectric medium in between, the positive and negative charges cannot be the same. So here an electric field is created which stores energy. The direction of electric field is from the positive to negative plate and the field is uniform throughout. In engineering drawings and circuit boards, capacitors are represented by such symbols. A white stripe on the capacitor with negative sign. The pin next to this white color is called the negative terminal of the capacitor and the other is the positive terminal. Some numbers and units are written on the capacitor. For example, in the case of this capacitor, 33 microfarads, which helps to measure the capacitance of the capacitor. The capacitor is measured in farad units. Another value is voltage. In the case of this capacitor, 63 volts. This means that this capacitor can operate up to 63 volt. If more than 63 volts, the capacitor will burn out. We use capacitor for various purposes like fan, motor, circuit boards, induction oven, etc. Capacitors are also used in full bridge rectification circuits. Thank you for watching Physics First. For more informative and educational videos, please like, share, and subscribe Physics First.